What are the things that you wait for? Who enjoys waiting? Any one hand? I don't see any hands. No one enjoys waiting. Tell me just some of the things. Let's shout out some of them. Some of the things that you actually wait for. The train. You wait for the doctors. You wait for a music stand. What else? Retirement. What else do you wait for? Retirement. Okay, anything else? You wait at the bank. What about the post office? Who likes the post office queue? That has to be... You like the post office queue. You can jump the queue. I'll come with you next time. <laughs> I always find the longest one, I think. Um, I was with someone in the... A, a few of us in a car the other day, and I found out that someone here really dislikes traffic jams. I'm not going to say who it was. I wasn't actually thinking of you. <laughs> Traffic jams. What about results? Exams. Doctors, results. I'm quite surprised, as we're in November, no one has said Christmas yet. Oh, you did? Oh, good. Oh, good. Well done, Nigel. You said Christmas. That's good. What about those of you that are married? Have you ever had to wait for your spouse. Now, is it that the women wait for the men or the men wait for the women? We wait for the... <laughs> Barbie waits for Keith. What about lunch? Ah. Oh. If you didn't hear that, he said she's worth waiting for. What about those who bake when you have a cake in the oven? You know, and you're just waiting, and you can smell it, and the longer it cooks, the better it smells. I did that once. Um, <laughs> come on, people, keep up, keep up. All right, maybe twice. There's one for Keith. What about when you're waiting for a coffee in Starbucks? Your venti, extra hot, decaf, skinny, latte, with a shot of sugar-free hazelnut to go. What about if you're waiting for marriage? All kinds of things you can wait for. And do you ever find that the waiting time can vary depending on what you're waiting for? If you're in the car waiting for someone to come out and meet you, that time can seem like that can seem a few minutes, or if you put the music on and you're messing about, suddenly, oh, well, you're here already. What things really take a long time to wait for? Where every minute can seem like hours, and you're just waiting. Payday, doctor's results, and you sit there. Uh, it, it can wait, it, it can change depending on what we're waiting for. And we can have different feelings, can't we? When we're sitting in that chair, we can feel all happy and at peace and ease and a sense of excitement as we wait. Or we can be thinking, I hope it won't be bad news today. And there can be fear and there can be some anticipation and we can get a bit anxious. And what do you do when you wait? What goes through your mind? Because you can spend a long time waiting, can't you? I've spent, I mean, if I added up all the time in my life I've spent waiting, it would be quite a long time. And in a waiting room, you don't always hear your name called right, do you? Or is that just me? Because when I'm in a waiting room, if I'm waiting for something, it's normally something formal. And so therefore, they don't call me Penny, they call me Penelope. But not everyone has heard the name Penelope. So I'm waiting for Penelope, uh, Miss Upson, uh, Penny Lope, Penelope. And I'm thinking, in a minute, I'll hear something, and then I'll be, oh, was that? And, and then you say, do you ever say to the person next to you, did they just call me, or were they calling? Do you ever do that? You, you, oh, good. I thought it was just me. And then you think you hear yourself, and, and then you don't. And um, I remember uh, earlier this year, I was in a waiting room, and I was in Prestatin in North Wales. And I was in a waiting room for quite a long time. 
because we were at Elam Conference and I had to go and have an x-ray. And obviously I hadn't planned on going, so I was in A&E and Bev kindly took me. So we waited in A&E for about three hours. And I realized, you know, when you're waiting a long time, you can do things that you wouldn't normally do, don't you? So I tell them what we did, Bev. Well, Bev and I decided that we would, I think, actually, I decided, and Bev just went along with it because she was great that night. Well, she's great all the time, but particularly that night for offering to take me. And we decided that we would diagnose everyone that came in. And it, I mean, some of them were really obvious. If they were sitting there with their arm in a sling, we thought, oh, a broken arm. Some of them, we, you looked at them and thought, do you know, you look all right, actually. But they were there for some reason. So after we'd done that, we then decided, okay, well, we've diagnosed everyone in the room. What should we do now? So what do you do when you're in North Wales and you're English? You learn Welsh. So we thought, well, let's learn some Welsh. But all it was was the, um, the signs. So, you know, please wait here in Welsh. It wasn't anything that I'd probably use again at any point. And uh, I realized that waiting there for a long time made us both do, actually, silly things that we wouldn't normally do. Maybe we would. And it, it can make us do funny things. I love it. But on a serious note, the way to... It can make us do funny things. So what happens... In fact, if, if you do want to see the, what happened to the lady, there is a, a follow-on from that, but I won't play you any more tonight, so you can have a look at that. But needless to say, she does win over Mr. Bean. So what do you do if you find yourself in a waiting period in your life? And can I just assure you, if you're not in one at the moment, you will be in one soon. <laughs> Whether that's something happening in your life or whether you find yourself waiting for something or if it's in the post office tomorrow. I remember God speaking to me when I was 17 and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that one day I would be in full-time ministry. That was just, I knew that was his call for my life and I knew that's how it would work out. And it didn't happen for 13 years. And I thought it would happen when I got to 25 because I thought everything happened when you were 25. For some reason, I thought I actually thought I'd go into banking at 25. I thought I'd get married when I was 25. And I just thought 25 was when it all happened. And it does for some. But for me, 25 came and went only recently. And, uh, And it didn't all happen. And when people say to you, you know, they always do that when you, when you're, um, It's one of the first questions, isn't it? When you meet someone you haven't met before, they say, oh, what do you do? And uh, I used to say, oh, well, I'm in insurance at the minute, but I believe I'll I'll be in full-time ministry one time, you know, one day. And and that was my line. I used to say that. And then uh, I used to say that every time someone would ask me. And then it got to the point, years went by, and I thought, but I can't see it happening yet. So when they used to say, well, what do you do? I'm in insurance. And on the outside, it didn't look like much was happening. But on the inside, I knew that I was in a waiting period. And I don't want you to sit there thinking, great, 13 years, well, that's a long time to wait. Because it might be really short for you. And they can differ depending on what season we're in and what's happening in our lives and what God is doing. But for me, I realized that it was all about what happened at the end. And I kind of thought, oh, well, that's just the waiting period. That's, that's just what happens while you wait to where you get to where you want to be. And I realized that I had to trust God in the waiting time. And sometimes that's harder than when you first get an idea or God drops something in your heart or you're doing something. Even when you're first at the post office, you know it's all right for a minute. And then suddenly it's... You can sit there and think, well, I'm a bit bored of this now. It's gone on for long enough. I should be further along than I am. And I'm standing here or I'm sitting here in this waiting room, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And what do we do with those moments in our lives when we find ourselves waiting? It wasn't that I'd stop believing that I would be in ministry one time and that was all going to work out. It wasn't that I stopped believing that God could answer my prayer 
or my hopes and my dreams and what he'd shown me. It was the fact that I just stopped saying, I just stopped saying it. But I didn't stop believing it. And I had to learn to enjoy the waiting time and see it for what God saw it as.